Okay, in this video we're going to look at something called Clairaut's theorem and some higher order partial derivatives. So let's see this theorem first. So let's suppose that f is a two variable function that's defined on a disk d and that d contains the point a, b. And also let's suppose that f of x, y and f of y, x are continuous on d. Then f sub x, y and f sub y, x are the same. In other words, the two mixed partial derivatives are the same regardless of what order you take those partial derivatives um, in. So you can take the partial with respect to x first or the partial with respect to y first. And this is true at the point a, b. Okay, so let's apply this theorem to take this mixed partial derivative. So we want to find f sub x, y of these two functions. So really what we want to choose is, is it easier to take the derivative with respect to x first or with respect to y first? And I think in this first example, it's easier to take the derivative with respect to y first. And that is because if we take the derivative with respect to x, we have to use the product rule and we might as well save that for later. So let's take the derivative with respect to y. So the partial with respect to y, so that's going to give us f sub y. But here we have x is a constant and y is a variable, so we have to use the chain rule here. And notice the derivative of e to the x squared y, so that's just going to be x squared times e to the x squared y, again because x squared is a constant. And we know the derivative of, for example, e to the kx is k times e to the kx, where k is a constant. It's just here we have uh, everything mixed around with some variables that we are treating in constants and some that we are not. So, in in other words, this x squared comes down, and that's going to give us x cubed e to the x squared y. Great. Now we can take the partial of this with respect to x, and that's going to give us f sub xy. But we have to use the product rule for this, so notice the derivative of this first term is going to be 3x squared e to the x squared y. And then we need to use the chain rule for the other part, so notice that's going to be x cubed, and then we're going to have e to the x squared y times the derivative with respect to x of x squared y. So remember, I did the chain rule, so the derivative of the exponential is itself times the derivative of the exponent. So let's see if we can simplify that. That's going to give us 3x squared e to the x squared y, and then plus... So if we take the derivative of this with respect to x, notice we get 2xy. Good. But now combining that with this x cubed in front, that's going to give us 2x uh, to the fourth y e to the x squared y. And that's our mixed partial. Okay, so now let's look at this next one. So in this case, I think maybe it's easier to take the x derivative first because the y derivative is wrapped up in this natural log. I think it's about the same in this case, but we'll take the derivative with respect to x first. So the partial with respect to x, so that'll give us f sub x. But now in that case, uh, natural log of y is a constant, so that's like the coefficient of x. So that's going to give us natural log of y will be the derivative. And now we have to take the derivative of this with respect to y. And so f sub xy, but that's just 1 over y because that's what the derivative of the natural log is. Okay, good. So I want to clean up the board and then do one more example involving higher order partial derivatives. Okay, so for our last example, we want to look at the following function and some properties that it satisfies. So let's let z equal the natural log of e to the x plus e to the y. The first thing we want to show is the partial of z with respect to x plus the partial of z with respect to y is equal to 1. So this is just a straightforward calculation. So the partial of z with respect to x plus the partial of z with respect to y. So that's going to be equal to, well, the partial of z with respect to x is going to be uh, 1 over e to the x plus e to the y times the derivative of e to the x plus e to the y with respect to x, but that's just going to give us e to the x. Great. So let's underline that in yellow because that's that term. Now let's focus on this orange term. So again, the derivative of the natural log part is going to send all of that to the denominator times 
the derivative of the inside with respect to y, but that's just going to give us e to the y because the e to the x term is a constant. Okay, good. So notice that's going to give us e to the x plus e to the y over e to the x plus e to the y, which is obviously 1, which is exactly what we wanted to show. Okay, so now the next thing we want to show is this uh, identity involving these second partial derivatives. So the second with respect to x times the second with respect to y minus the square of the mixed partial is equal to zero. So let's calculate this uh, second derivative with respect to x. And notice here we're going to use the fact that we have already calculated the partial derivative with respect to x. And we've gotten that that is e to the x over e to the x plus e to the y. So all we need to do here is take the partial with respect to x of e to the x over e to the x plus e to the y. Okay, good. So here we need to use the quotient rule. So the derivative of the numerator is e to the x times the denominator, with it, which is e to the x plus e to the y. And then we need to do minus the derivative of the denominator. So that's e to the x uh, times the numerator, which is e to the x. So again, we get that because the derivative of e to the y is just zero because that's a constant in this case. All over e to the x plus e to the y, the whole thing squared. Okay, so we've got that, but notice there's some simplification that can happen. This term right here and this term right here are going to cancel after distributing this e to the x through, and then we'll have to distribute the e to the x through to the e to the y part, and we'll end up with z sub xx is equal to e to the x plus y all over e to the x plus e to the y squared. Great. And now the next thing, I'll let you guys check this, that this is also equal to z sub x, sorry, z sub y, y. So that's actually pretty easy to check. Um, notice we have some symmetry about the variable x and y, so that's maybe something that is uh, expected. Okay, so now let's uh, find the derivative z sub xy. So that means we need to take uh, the partial with respect to x of the partial with respect to y, but we already calculated the partial with respect to y over here, so we can use that. So that means we have e to the y here over e to the x plus e to the y. And we're taking the partial with respect to x. So we can use the quotient rule again, but notice the derivative of the numerator is zero in this case, so we don't need that part. So this is going to be negative, the derivative of the denominator with respect to x, which is just going to be e to the x times the numerator, which is e to the y. So here, just to reiterate, I took the derivative of the numerator with respect to x, but that was zero minus the derivative of the de denominator with respect to x times the numerator. And now this is going to be all over e to the x uh, plus e to the y. Okay, great. But now notice that's going to simplify to minus e to the x plus y all over e to the x plus e to the y. Okay. Good, but now let's look at what we've got going on here. We have this zxx equals zyy equals this term right here. And then we have our z sub xy is equal to this term right here. But then I'll leave it to you guys to show that if you put them together in this manner, you will get zero. Okay, this is a good ending point.